This video is sponsored by Kent Faith, first choice for photo and video products. Hello and welcome to another video. You join me today from All Hallows on Sea. I've come out today to do my favourite type of photography, which is of course long exposure photography. On Thursday, in Thursday's video, I talked about, I reviewed the Kent Faith magnetic lens filter system. So I thought I'd come out today, do some long exposures, test out the ND filters in the field. So let's see how we get on with them. Do you ever find that when you go back to locations on multiple occasions, you still have to stop and reshoot the compositions that you've captured previously, just to see if you can capture it a little bit different, a little bit better than the last time you were there. Every single time I've been to All Hallows on Sea, I've had to stop and capture this specific scene, whether it be during the daylight, like it is now, or when I last came here and it was sunrise and a little bit foggy, and I got some lovely, it was almost like cotton candy. And because I'm here again today, I'm gonna to have to see what I can do. There's quite a bit of movement. It's quite windy out here today. So I think I might even have to get the tripod out, put it on a tripod and even get this as a long exposure. Help today's video, that is exactly what we're doing today. We're doing long exposures. Doesn't mean to say every shot has to be one though. But with the speed of that water, the ripples on the water, it might be a case of getting the ND1000 on the front of this lens and really smoothing, really slowing down the shutter and getting some nice smoothness in this scene, some nice softness in this scene. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Neil, what are you doing? Haven't you been to the coast enough? Long exposure photography, how many more places can you find to slow down the shutter, get some milky smooth water, get some motion maybe in the water? It's being done. There's nowhere else you can go to find something different. However, that's not always the case because whenever I've been out somewhere, there's always something a little bit different whenever you go to each different coastal location. I don't know what it is, the, of course, the obvious subject to shoot when you come to somewhere like this. Lovely that the sun has come out now. It's been threatening rain all day today and there's a few clouds over that way. But go back to long exposure photography and go back to finding various subjects. Groins are the obvious one. Whenever I go out to the coast, it's always groins. Every location I go to on the coast, they seem to have something different about them. There's a different composition element to them. Take this scene for example, and what I'll do, so you can see what it is that I'm talking about, I'll put the live view on. So you can see the tide is really coming in, and that's the first element that I always look for when I'm doing long exposures. You either need the tide, ideally you want the tide coming in, because the moment the tide starts disappearing and going out, that's when you're on a time sensitive mission. That's when you've got a limited amount of time before the tide just goes out far enough and you've got to call it a day. Still got plenty of time for the tide to come in and then disappear again. But here with this shot, we've got the grinds going out to sea. Over here on the right hand side, just down here in the corner, we've got a little bit of the beach still left exposed. We've got some lovely colors in the pebbles. And then we've got like this platform that I'm standing on. Every now and again, as you just saw then, a wave's coming crashing over and we're getting a little bit of water, getting a bit of the sea on this platform that I'm standing on. And over on the right, again, we've got some motion in the swell. So we've got a lot going on with this shot. I could get a nice milky smooth scene if I want, and I probably will do that because why not? But it, all, it might also be a case of switching to my eight stop ND filter. I've currently got the 10 stop ND filter on. It's like one, two o'clock in the afternoon at the moment. So with the amount of light we've got available to us, the 10 stop is going to be the best to use. Because if I go back to my settings, at the moment I'm set 
set a sec I'm set with a sec six I'm set with a six I'm set with a six second timer if I can get my words out a lot of s words there um, and of course if I take the ND filter off and this is how easy it is to use the magnetic filters it's why I love them it's why they're so much easier to use than screw on filters because if I take this one off and I go right let's put the the, the eight stop ND filter on slap that on the front of the lens I can go right I'm going to get so many seconds nope that's not the one I want I'm going to change it over put the 10 stop filter back on okay that might be a little bit too dark what I can do instead I can play with the ISO raise the ISO a little bit and just work with whatever happens at the time it's so it's so frustrating because previously my eight stop ND filter was my magnetic one the Kent Bay uh, filter that I paid for with my own money and I had a 10 stop screw on filter which was frustrating because it just took it, it took so much longer to, until it took so much longer to get everything how I wanted it to and it took so long I'd find that I'd missed the moment and this tide is coming in so much my socks are starting to get wet so I think I'm gonna have to get on take this shot and I'll share it on screen in just a second And then you get the type of long exposure photography at the coast next to groins where it's all about luck. You've just got to time it perfectly, waiting for the right moment. It's nothing intricate, it's nothing special, this particular scene. I was literally just taking a couple of shots the other side of these groins here. And I noticed how we've got these little bits of seaweed here in the foreground. And as the tide is coming inwards, we're getting some swirling patterns with the surf as it surrounds. That there would have actually been a great time to capture it had I not been, had I not been talking away. But with this type of shot, it's so much more challenging, it's so much more difficult, it's so much rewarding when it comes off because it's more than just slowing down the shutter as much as humanly possible and getting a nice milky smooth scene in front of you. Here, I'm gonna wanna play around between uh, my shutter speeds, making sure that I can get the right one, playing with my settings, finding the right moment, the right instant, and even then, because this seaweed here, it's not a solid object, it's at the same time being moved around. So whether I can get a nice, sharp image remains to be seen. This one might be a bit too challenging because, of course, the seaweed being brushed around, being bullied around as well. But this is a sign as well, that long exposure photography, it's not all about slowing the shutter speed down as much as possible or heading to the coast and finding the same old subject. Any part of the coast really offers something a little bit different, even if the subjects can be slightly similar. I have to admit the worst part about coming to the coast is making sure you don't get too much sand in your gear. I left this lying on the beach and now I've got sand all over it so I'm having to clean it up. One negative I have heard about magnetic filters in general, not necessarily the Kent Faith ones, uh, if you're planning on going to Iceland they've got the magnificent black beaches there haven't they? The sand's black as anything, I think it's from the uh, volcanoes. Never been there yet myself. I've heard if you use magnetic filters out there, the black sand's magnetic itself. And if it gets on your magnetic lens, you've had it, it's gonna be a bugger trying to get that off and not, and not scratch up your lens. So just something to be aware if ever you're heading that direction. I'd best be careful as well. Make sure I don't get too isolated out here with the tide still coming in. Need to make sure I've got an exit strategy. 
because of course if the tide comes in and I go too far that way, I'll be swimming out of here. And I think on that note, I should thank the sponsor of today's video, Kent Faith. Kent Faith, a first choice for photo and video products. They supply a range of camera accessories at a great price. You don't have to spend the big bucks to end up with great images. They supply other filters, they supply camera bags, they supply tripods. And if you're interested in this particular lens filter system, I'll put a link down in the description below. And if you use the offer code NIL, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So before I call it a day and end this video, I wanted to come around to this one particular bay. This bay where I am now was the whole reason for coming out to All Hallows on Sea and doing some long exposures. You see, the beauty of doing them at the coast is you can go to some spots and you get coastline as far as the eye can see. You've got unlimited, you're spoiled for a choice really for the type of compositions that you want. You've got rocks, you've got groins, you've got sand, you've got simplicity with the endless water, with the endless sea disappearing into the horizon. But this here bay was the particular reason that I wanted to come out here today. You see, it's just this small stretch of sandy beach, absolutely tiny. And the bay just curves around off into the distance. Absolutely beautiful shot out here that I've got set up for this one. And we're going for the extreme. I've got ISO 100, I'm on the tripod, and I want a nice milky smooth shot first time around, if possible. And my F16, for a reason as well for my aperture. I want to close up the aperture as much as possible, let as little light in, so then I've got to open up the shutter even wider, which make, takes the shutter to the maximum of 30 seconds. This is going to be a really long exposure, this first shot. But then afterwards, I'm going to play around. Because you see, for me, long exposures, they're not just about getting milky smooth water. It's a fine art, that's why I love them so much. That and being at the coast, it's just so peaceful hearing the sound of the waves coming in, lapping on the beach. You can't get a better sound in photography. It's really windy out today. That's ruining the uh, atmosphere. That's ru ruining the ambience, so to speak. But it's why I've got the tripod so low to the center of gravity so that the wind can't buffer, it can't shake the camera too much. So I still get a nice amount of sharpness. But once I've captured this fair shot, that's when I'm going to start playing around. So I'll get on with taking these shots that I've got in mind. I've got a couple of rocks over in the background, which I might use as another foreground element, but I'll get on taking those shots and I'll share them up on screen now. I think on that note, that is me done for another video. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments and if you can hit that subscribe button, it's so much appreciated. It really does help me out with the algorithm. But until next time, you take care and it's bye from me.